it's the table mics, right? Oh, you mean...
Northside University Credit Union Pavilion. St. Mary's gets set to take on number 16 Gonzaga here in Moraga. Emmy Giddings with you on the WCC Network. So glad you could join us for Australian Heritage Night. It has been something that in here in Moraga has become a special day. And of course, representatives from both the women's team and the men's team who take on Santa Clara later tonight. Before the women, represented by three different Australians here this afternoon. Jade Kirisome, Hannah Rapp, and Leah Hannafin for St. Mary's. And this is a tough and tall matchup today for the Gales, who currently enter at 10-9 overall, coming up a loss their last time out to Portland on Thursday. They are 4-4 four four in the WCC, still tied for fourth place. But Gonzaga offers something that the Gales have not seen before, and that is an unbeaten conference group. Right now, Gonzaga 18-2 overall this year. They are 8-0 in the WCC. So St. Mary's before that loss had won three in a row, carried some momentum into this homestand of four games. It is the second of four, of course, two more coming next week that we're looking forward to. But the task at hand right now are the Zags. Now Gonzaga on their side are missing a couple of pieces, as is St. Mary's. And starting with the Gills, the biggest absence they will face today will be Allie Bamberger, not on the floor, although did receive some good news. She was hurt in the second quarter against Portland, went down with what looked like a knee injury, and apparently is only going to miss a couple of games, according to interim head coach Allison Fasnack. So that is fantastic news for Bamberger, who has already had that leg repaired surgically once or twice. Meanwhile, on the Gonzaga side, where they are missing a couple of players that contributed to last year's run to the second round of the NCAA tournament. One of them being Kaylee Trong, the senior guard out of Houston, Texas. Now her sister Kaylin will play and has been dominant this year for Gonzaga. But Kaylee, who scored nearly 350 points last season, was a first team all WCC selection, has not played since November 21st against Tennessee. Also, Bree Salenbein, a sophomore six foot two, has not played this entire season to an injury she sustained last year in the NCAA, pardon me, in the WCC tournament. And she has been missing this entire year for Gonzaga. The final absence is going to be for the Bulldogs. And so they're going to be missing Trong, one of their best players this year. Also, Mon Hybens, part of me, the sophomore forward from the Netherlands, has not played since that exact day against Tennessee as well. So both sides missing a couple of pieces, and yet it is going to be up to St. Mary to try to defend home court here on Australian Heritage Day. And so glad you could join us inside University Credit Union Pavilion. St. Mary's will trot out their starting five of Leia Hannafin, Tacey Whedon, Taylor Dalton, Hannah Rapp, and Aspen Garrison asked to fill in for Bamberger. Going to see a lot of Garrison and Amy West as we did down the stretch of the Portland game on Thursday night, filling in for Bamberger. Meanwhile, on the Gonzaga side, it's Eliza Hollinsworth also from Australia, represented here on her Heritage Day in Moraga, along with the aforementioned Kaylin Trong, Yvonne E. Jim, the junior forward from Calgary, Alberta, who had 22 and 12, her last time out against Pacific. Meanwhile, Brenna Maxwell, one of the sharpest shooters in the country by Michaela Williams, will round out the starting five. So at the front, it's E. Jim that wins the tip, and Gonzaga begins with possession. This is a Bulldogs team that's averaging about 87 points per game. They are number one in the country as far as shooting it from three-point range, 42.6% on the year. Also, the country's best free throw shooting team as the game's first bucket goes inside to Eliza Hollenworth. And Gonzaga is on the board. Meanwhile, for St. Mary's, hopefully looking to muster more than the 41 points they had their last time out against a very stout Portland team. Gonzaga playing a man-to-man -man defense, unlike that 1-3-1 that the Pilots featured against the Gales on Thursday, which gave them some fits. Leah Hannafin, team leader in assists, looking to distribute. Only five to shoot for the Gales in their first offensive possession. And Taylor Dalton, off, high off the window, scores for two. E. Jim in the post, the reigning WCC sixth woman of the year, goes inside and working on Garrison that time is able to hit. This is a Gonzaga team that also has been stout defensively. 
And simply put, the conference is best in just about every statistical category. Aspen Garrison creating some space and finishing with the left hand. Aspen Garrison getting the start today. Last year, as a freshman, played in 31 games. 55% shooter a year ago. The season off to a nice start as well. Driving in is Michaela Williams and is denied by Hannah Rapp. Nice rejection there by Rapp. Five on the shot clock for Trong, who kicks it out to the open shooter straight away. Front rim and the shooter's touch from Eliza Hollingsworth. Scored 11 points against Pacific. And Zaga, just a three-point victory against the Tigers on Thursday as Tacey Whedon will trigger the triple. It's off the mark, but a long rebound grabbed by Hannafin. 81-78 victory for Gonzaga against Pacific to remain perfect in conference play. Dalton looking to cut inside and off the pass from Hannafin. It's tipped out of bounds off of the Bulldogs. Hannafin making her 18th start. Off the inbounds, gives it up to Hannah Rapp, who's immediately met by a double team. And it'll be a jump ball. Possession error will keep it on this side of the floor. With six seconds to shoot here in the opening period, Gonzaga with an early three-point edge. Hannafin had that tipped away by E. Jim. And part of me, it was off of Rapp, who touched it last. And so that'll be a turnover for St. Mary's, something to keep an eye on. The turnovers for the Gales have been upwards of around 18 per game this season. Second to last in the conference, and it bit them against Portland. They turned a lot of those turnovers into points. He was stripped by Dalton, and now Garrison matched up with Ejim, who will draw contact driving inside. First personal foul of the game goes against St. Mary's. And Ejim will step to the stripe. Currently averaging 16.4 points per game. Third among WCC scores. And makes her first free throw. That is also something, as I mentioned at the top, that Gonzaga does better than anyone else in the country. 80.1% as a team from the free throw line. Ejim around there as well as she nets both. And now Dalton turns it over in the backcourt and gliding to the rim is Michaela Williams. Gonzaga with an early seven point lead off the turnover. Dalton towards the corner. Whedon losing the handle. Right now the Bulldogs speeding up St. Mary's in a similar fashion to how Portland did. And so interim head coach Allison Fasnack will go to her bench and go to the veteran senior guard, fifth year guard, pardon me, the grad student. That is Claire Steele is now a minor light malfunction here inside UCU. Well, nothing wrong with playing some basketball under the lights, but not under just the LED boards as they come back on quickly. So whoever accidentally was propped up against the wall, knocked off a couple switches. We appreciate you redoing so. And so Gonzaga off the side out. And there's Kaylin Trong. Was able to find Williams there. And so Gonzaga. Who again has been a team that can score with the best of them. Off to a hot start early. Player Steele driving inside on Trong. Draws the bump and it's going to be an offensive foul. Stepping in front that time just outside of the restricted area was Brenna Maxwell. So a couple of grad transfers going toe to toe there. Claire Steele from Lehigh where she spent her last four years. Meanwhile, Brenna Maxwell coming over and transferring from the University of Utah where she amassed over 1,000 points with the Utes in her four years. Strong inside, Ejim, quick move, left hand off the window. That's a timeout, St. Mary's wants to slow things up. Gonzaga a hot start, three and a half minutes in, already 15 points for the Zags who have an early 11-point lead. We will step aside as well. 6.26 left here in the period. And St. Mary's with some work to do, looking for some points, trailing by 11. You're watching St. Mary's women's basketball on stadium here from Moraga.
Gonzaga off to an 11-0 run over the last minute, 45, has helped them gain an 11-point lead. St. Mary's trying to defend home court against the number 16 team in the country who remains undefeated in the WCC and right now stands atop the standing. St. Mary's currently in fourth, hoping to gain some ground after a loss on Thursday to Portland. As Leah Hannafin, along with Garrison Rapp, Steele, as well as Whedon, the five on the floor for St. Mary's. And the pass out to Whedon goes to the backcourt. That will be a turnover for St. Mary's. Already the fifth giveaway by the Gales. And just about four minutes into this first quarter. Gonzaga has used that so far to create eight points off of turnovers. When they get chances, they tend to capitalize on them. Ejim from the high post. Staring at Amy West, who checked into the game, along with McKenna Mastora. Three-pointer triggered there by Maxwell. One of the country's best from beyond the arc, shooting 53.5% from three this season. Could not find the range there. Emmy mean, Giddings with you on the WCC Network and Stadium today. So glad you could join us. And also make sure to tune into the men's game at 5 o'clock at NBC Sports Bay Area. Mastora. Off the screen from West, Burrows inside. Left-handed, a little strong, and then poked out of play. It's going to be off of the white jerseys of the Zags. And Zaga led by ninth-year head coach Lisa Fortier, who has done a fantastic job in each and every season she has been in Spokane. The only coach in program history to have seven 20-win seasons in their first eight. And of course, won 27 games last year, making it to the second round of the NCAA tournament, hoping for a similar result this year. Mastora, back out for Steele, has five to shoot, trying to go to work on Maxwell. Goes high off the window. What a finish from Claire Steele. Egypt now quickly around West, the reverse and a lefty finish for Yvonne Ejim, top three scorer in the conference for a reason. And she's got her third bucket, she's got eight points. Hannaf in the crossover, dumps it off to West, who kicks it out, Steele, thought about the three. Whedon will trigger it, and she will make it. Tacey Whedon, who was relatively quiet on Thursday, only a couple of threes. Now with 367 career three-pointers. That ball tipped out of bounds off of St. Mary's. Gonzaga will bring a couple of substitutions in. Junior forward Destiny Burton in for the first time. Joined by the redshirt freshman Callie Stokes. Strong out to Maxwell. Looking for Burton and E. Jim. But the lane a bit clogged there, and so Gonzaga will reset with 10 to shoot. Trong steps into a three and makes it. Now, Kaylin Trong with 14 points, six rebounds, and seven assists against Pacific. Knocks down Gonzaga's second three, and they have an 11 point lead. West nearly got around Burton, but had it poked from behind. Ejim on the takeaway up ahead to Trong. Distributes in a short corner J by Michaela Williams is good. Gonzaga has, has hit seven of their last nine field goals from the floor, and they are filling it up early here in Moraga. Whedon trying to drive inside, and what a soft touch by Tacey Whedon. Flips it up and in. So St. Mary's beginning to find their stride offensively. Now trying to get some stops on the defensive side of the ball. Ejim off the tough feed from Trong. Kind of maneuvered to get it back in her hands and went up for the two. Gonzaga already with 24 points with under 3.30 to go here in the first quarter. Whedon, step through move, blocked from behind by Williams, grabbed by Burton. Trong up ahead, looking there for Michaela Williams, who misses it off the front of the rim. Store to West. 
Had it stripped, but Hannafin's there. With Egem in her face, she'll circle back out for Claire Steele. Steele looking to go right. Nice bounce pass inside to West. And the weak side help from Trong creates a foul that will put Amy West at the free throw line. So St. Mary's will make a trio of substitutions, as will Gonzaga. Dalton, Rapp, and they'll have to wait for Garrison to check in for Amy West off these free throws. Meanwhile, Gonzaga will bring in Esther Little for the first time, as well as Collinsworth returning. And West will make both of her free throws. So she goes to the bench, and Aspen Garrison will come in. Bruno Maxwell, the third substitution for Gonzaga. And a three-pointer wide open there for Hollinsworth. Player still grabs the rebound. Mastora to the rim. Right finish from the left side. Nice play by Steele. Better finish from Mastora. Hollingsworth was one of four Zags with 10 or more points on Thursday against Pacific. Gets it back from Trong, who hands it right back to her. Under two to play in the opening period. St. Mary's down by nine. Trong had it stripped by Dalton. And St. Mary's in the defensive intensity has picked up in the second half of this first quarter. They'll swing it now to Rapp. Crossing over on Little. Step through move. Too strong off the window. And then Steele steals it in the backcourt. Three on one, she'll slow things up. And a wrap, going right at Little. Kicks it to the corner, Dalton the three. Off the side of the backboard. Gonzaga shooting 67% in this first quarter. St. Mary shooting 60 Inside there for Hollingsworth. Tries to flip it around Garrison. Excellent post defense, and then a foul is called. That's going to go against Little of Gonzaga. Jade Kirisome will enter for St. Mary's for the first time. Meanwhile, the redshirt freshman Peyton Muma out of Highlands Ranch, Colorado, will come in for the Bulldogs. Zag after turning over St. Mary's five times in the first five minutes. Hasn't able to do it since then. Aspen Garrison off the feed from Mastora. St. Mary's clicking on offense right now. Little will leave it for Muma. Got 17 second separation shot clock and game clock. Not quite a chance of the two for one. Little didn't want the long shot. It said drives inside, gives it up to Hollingsworth. Her point blank range at first is no good, but then gets it right back and scores. Shot clock is off for St. Mary's. Would love to go into the break at least down by nine. Down to the second quarter. Kirisome around Little. Into the interior. Garrison's got two to shoot. One second. Lefty layup. And it's just a bit short, but St. Mary's a strong finish after a slow start to that first quarter. They go into the second period trailing 26 to 17. Second quarter coming up next. My name is Evan Giddings. You're watching St. Mary's Women's Basketball on Stadium.
Jim begins the second quarter with a two-pointer for Gonzaga. She's now got 12 points on five shots to lead all scores on the floor. And Gonzaga with an 11-point lead to have their largest of the afternoon. It's Australian Heritage Day here in Moraga inside University Credit Union Pavilion. Evan Giddings with you on stadium as Raffles swing it out and Claire Steele will trigger the triple. A bit long offensive rebound wrestled in by Aspen Garrison and she'll draw a foul that will take it out underneath. Well, St. Mary's in that first quarter shot extremely well. 7 of 14, 50% from the floor. The only difference was Gonzaga was 11 of 18. So just one bit better. And the difference also points off of turnovers as St. Mary's turns it over right there. Six turnovers in the first quarter for St. Mary's leading to 10 points for Gonzaga. And just about the difference right now in this ball game. Gill showing a lot of fight after that first media timeout. The last six and a half minutes, Ejim going quickly off the feed there from Muma. And Yvonne Ejim's got 14 points now in the ball game. Whedon, a step back. That's pure. Going over the top of Brenna Maxwell. Well, St. Mary's is going to need Tacey Whedon to fill some of that offensive void left by Allie Bamberger who was injured in the second quarter on Thursday against Portland. Nothing extremely serious to that right leg, but going to be missing a couple of games according to interim head coach Allison Fasnack. Here's Maxwell drives, a pull up J. Tough shot by Brenna Maxwell. The transfer from Utah, two time Pac-12 honorable mention, and has fit nicely into this Gonzaga team. Here is Somi, the crossover. Stops and then will dish it out to Whedon, who quickly fires up from the corner. It was a three, but it was off. And maybe that trick, that quick trigger from Whedon will open things up inside for St. Mary's. Ejim going right at Garrison. Her first miss of the evening. But well, pardon me, that was Amy West on defense. Nice job by the six foot four redshirt senior. A traveling violation against Hannah Ratt. And off the stoppage, Gonzaga will bring back three different players. And it's going to be Kaylin Strong along with Destiny Burton and Michaela Williams. So Strong will bring it up the court, playing in her 113th game in her Bulldogs career. Swings it out to Williams. Claire Steele nearly took that one away, batted into the backcourt, a retrieved by Trong, who steps into a three. Off the rim, no, wrapped the rebound. St. Mary's at least doing its best to slow down this Gonzaga attack that has scored about 88 points per game this season. But another turnover gives the Bulldogs another free opportunity as stepping into a three is Williams. No, and wraps there for the board. Two straight turnovers for St. Mary's. Sweden, a three off the mark. Good look for Tacey Whedon as Williams will try to go coast to coast. Goes into the lane and gets hit, so she will draw free throws as Ellie Croco will come in for the first time for St. Mary's, along with Leia Hannafin, who returns. St. Mary's who sort of struggled against Portland to find points outside of the paint has already done a much better job here today. 12 points of their 19 coming on the inside, but seven from the perimeter. As we're not able to get jump shots to fall really on Thursday, leading to the 64 to 41 loss to the Pilots. So splitting free throws there was Michaela Williams. And Gonzaga leading by 14. Kirisome into the lane and we'll dish it out. Hannafin goes around the back to an open steal. Cuts inside Hannafin from deep off the mark. The same marriage is one of six from downtown so far. Has been held scoreless over the last two and a half minutes.
Williams, the junior out of L.A. Stops, makes the shot, but not before an offensive foul is called on Burton. Illegal screen set by the junior forward out of Wichita. And Lisa Fortier will go back to her bench. Returning is Callie Stokes. Joining Ejim Trong, Burton, and Williams. Also Taylor Dalton back in for St. Mary's, along with Mastora. McKenna Mastora trying to find an angle around Ejim, has to give it up. Whedon creates a little bit of space. Kept that back foot on the floor. No jump ball. And then Dalton, miscommunication with Mastora. And that is St. Mary's 10th turnover here in this first half. Now the Gills have not committed as many live ball turnovers. That's something we've talked about on the broadcast throughout this season. Today against Gonzaga as they did against Portland. But Gonzaga, of course, with extra opportunities is such a highly efficient offense that they have turned those 10 turnovers into 12 points. Rare giveaway from the Zags there. So Hannafin looking for Mastora, cuts into the lane, gets rid of it just near the baseline. And a skip pass now ends up in the hands of Croco. Eight to shoot for St. Mary's. Hannafin being defended by Ejim. Looking for the baseline to Croco. One to shoot, has to throw it up. Too little, too late. And there's a shot clock violation against St. Mary's. For the last five possessions, St. Mary's hasn't even got a shot off against Gonzaga. Stokes now over to Trong. It goes to Burton. Now some high-low action with Ejim. Tries to force contact against Croco. Throws it up wildly. And Croco corrals the rebound. Dalton to an open Croco from the top of the key. Ellie Croco splashes home a three. So the first three made by a Gale not named Tacey Whedon. And that might be able to open up something inside offensively for St. Mary's. As Strong goes to the corner, driving baseline, hanging, but coming up short there is Stokes. And Croco is there for the rebound. Allie Bamberger on the bench, imposing her team to move up tempo as Tacey Whedon in transition knocks home a three and St. Mary's has cut it to eight. Williams, stripped by Dalton, taken away by Whedon. And now a foul in transition. And ECU's beginning to get some juice in the building. Timeout, Gonzaga. We'll turn it into a media timeout. 340 left here in the second quarter. We will step aside. St. Mary's right now on a 6-0 run. Back-to-back -back threes, it's 33-25. Gales with work to do on the other side. You're watching St. Mary's women's basketball on stadium.
Back-to-back three-pointers from St. Mary's has cut the Gonzaga lead to eight. 33-25 with three minutes and 40 seconds left here in the second quarter. Evan Giddings with you on stadium as we welcome you back inside UCU Pavilion here in Moraga. A doubleheader today for the Gales women's and men's basketball program on Australian Heritage Day as Tacey Whedon steps back. She's got the hot hand. Tacey Whedon back-to-back -back buckets and the Gales are within six. Eight straight offensively for St. Mary's. Still in a man-to-man -man look defensively as Kroko gets called for the foul. Got caught with a hand of the cookie jar on Yvonne Even Ejim, pardon me. And Ejim, who made her first five shots, one of three since, still leading all scores with 14 points for the Bulldogs. The inbounds will go to Michaela Williams. Gonzaga is a team shooting 54% from the floor. St. Mary's shooting 52. Trong goes inside, hangs, and is rejected by Croco. Ellie Croco defending the rim off the bench, and she has helped the Gales on both sides of the floor. Trong gets it out to Maxwell now. Tacey Wieda knows the shooter when she sees one as Maxwell off the screen pulls up, is short, but then gets fouled on the three. Pardon me, the official ruling that foul on the floor, it looks like. Our officials this afternoon, of course, Michael Murray, Dion Lewis, and Kathleen Cassidy made the call there. So she ruled that foul on the floor. It will be a side out, not three free throws. However, the fourth team foul for St. Mary's, it's the second. As St. Mary's comes up with a steal, McKenna Mastora inside, stops, tries to go up, and has it ripped away by Williams, keeps it alive, and then kicks it out. Whedon will fire the three, in and out. The St. Mary's bench and the pavilion was ready to explode. Little down inside to Ejim, met by a double team, stripped from behind by Croco, taken away by Dalton. Gales looking to push. Whedon thought about the transition three and said, we'll kick it to Rapp, who goes inside. Nice couple of passes. Whedon, three-pointer, and it's too long. And she knew that one was off as soon as it left her hands. Smiling as she backpedals in transition on defense. Gonzaga's scoring drought has now eclipsed five minutes here in this second quarter. Again, this is an offense that scores nearly 90 points per game, and the Gales have figured some things out here in the later stages of this first half. Williams off the nice screen, steps back, makes the three, and a whistle is called on the floor. So the question is, will that shot count? It's going to go against St. Mary's. So they're going to review when the shot was released. Either way, that's going to be the fifth team foul. So we'll keep it here through the review from the officiating crew. But it would be the fifth team foul. So either way, Gonzaga would go to the free throw line. They'd be in the penalty after the whistle. So really the question just becomes now whether it's going to be three free throws or two and which Bulldog will be taking them. Well, as we mentioned, coming back from the break, it is Australian Heritage Day for St. Mary's, of course, honoring the Aussies in our midst that have become really synonymous with both St. Mary's basketball programs, men's and women's, and three representatives from Australia today for St. Mary's, Leah Hannafin, Hannah Rapp, and Jade Kirisome. And even on the Gonzaga side, Eliza Hollingsworth from Australia as well. And of course, the tail end of the doubleheader will be coming up at 5 o'clock tonight when the men's team for St. Mary's hosts Santa Clara. That game coming up later is at 5 o'clock on NBC Sports Bay Area. So 
So the foul occurred after the shot. So it appears that Ejim will go to the free throw line for two, as again, the Gills were in the bonus. And so Yvonne Ejim, who's already made her first two free throws tonight, steps to the stripe and connects on her third. Ejim, a junior forward out of Calgary, Alberta, in Canada, was named to the 2023 Becky Hammond Mid-Major Player Mid-Season Watch List. One of the best mid-major players in the country. Third leading score in the WCC. And she gives Gonzaga a 10-point lead here in the second quarter with about 95 seconds left. Dalton to Whedon. And travels out and leaves it for Mastora. Gonzaga. Kind of a hybrid 2-3 zone. Going right through it as Hannah Rapp all the way to the rim, but comes up a bit short. Nice maneuver by Hannah Rapp. And a good look for the Gales. Would love to finish out this quarter strong. And now Taylor Dalton comes from the weak side, steals it away from Ejim. Up ahead in transition, and she just does miss the layup short. Ejim the rebound. But still, what a play by Taylor Dalton. Zaga's got a two-for-one opportunity here. Trong will take it, and she'll make it. Kaylin Trong from downtown, and Gonzaga leading by 14. Now five-second shot clock and game clock separation. Dalton goes around Maxwell, met by the double team, finds the open player. There's Rapp. Back to Dalton. Long two. They give her a three, but it's off the mark. And it's out of bounds. Last touched by St. Mary's, who will bring Claire Steele in for the final 10 seconds of the first half. After St. Mary's 8-0 run has been slowed a bit, Gonzaga has taken control of the final 90 seconds of this first half. Nearly got away with steps as Hollingsworth goes inside, blocked by West. Gonzaga's does not get a shot. But they end the first half on a 6-0 run and carry a 41-27 lead into the locker room here in Moraga. When we return, your halftime report coming up. Going to take a look at some stats. We'll take a look, look around the rest of the S and pardon me, the WCC as you're watching St. Mary's women's basketball here on Stadium.
University of Credit Union Pavilion. You're watching St. Mary's Women's Basketball on Stadium. My name is Evan Giddings, and at the break, St. Mary's trails 16th ranked Gonzaga 41 to 27. The Zags finished the first half on an 8-0 run, holding St. Mary's scoreless across the last three and a half minutes. And kind of a flip script from that middle portion of the second quarter where St. Mary's made its own 8-0 run. But the Zags got back to doing what they do best, which is defense, turning over the opponent, and scoring. Meanwhile, St. Mary's still looking for some consistency on offense, and particularly on the perimeter. Some team stats between both sides. Gonzaga shooting 52% from the floor. St. Mary's 42%. And the majority of that efficiency for the Zags in the first quarter, 26 points in the opening period to St. Mary's 17. Meanwhile, from downtown, the Zags have not shot it that well, at least did not so in the second quarter. Hit three of their first four looks from three-point range, finished four of nine in the first half. Meanwhile, St. Mary's three of eight from beyond the arc. Gales as a team, two of two at the free throw line. Gonzaga, five of six. Meanwhile, the turnovers, not necessarily the amount, but the extra opportunities is where this game has played a little bit of itself out. 11 turnovers for St. Mary's that Gonzaga has turned into 12 points. Meanwhile, Gonzaga has turned it over eight times, and yet St. Mary's has only been able to turn it into two points. Gonzaga out rebounding St. Mary's right now, 16 to 11. 5-2 on the offensive boards, 8-2 as far as second chance points. So talking about those extra rebounds, those extra possessions because of turnovers, they've capitalized on them just a little more than St. Mary's. Also an advantage on points in the paint, 20-12 in favor of Gonzaga. St. Mary's has defended the interior far better than they did against Portland on Thursday. They have really made Gonzaga have to work on the inside. Four blocks for the Gales, just two for Gonzaga, and six steals for St. Mary's compared to just three for Gonzaga. Perhaps the one difference is the amount of open looks and passes that have led to those looks. Of the 16 made field goals in the first half for Gonzaga, nine were assisted. Meanwhile, for St. Mary's, made 11 shots, four assisted for St. Mary's. Gonzaga has led the entire way outside of a couple of ties in the early minutes, and so they have controlled this game relatively from the get-go. It's up to St. Mary's to try and make up some ground in the second half, trailing by 14. As far as individual numbers go, Yvonne E. Jim leads all scores with 16 points, and Gonzaga, she has shot six of eight from the floor, made four, her first five field goals in the game, has also hit all four free throws so far to go along with three rebounds and four assists. Kaylin Trong, along with Michaela Williams, the two second leading scores for Gonzaga, both with eight points. Uh, Trong has also added on four assists to lead all passers so far in this game. Meanwhile, for St. Mary's, Tacey Whedon has led the way with 12 points after kind of a, a short game for her and less than double digits against Portland on Thursday in the tough loss for St. Mary's. She has bounced back with a strong first half, 5 of 11 from the floor, has not been shy from the three-point line, 2 of 7 from distance across her 17 minutes, and again, she leads all St. Mary's scorers with 12. Aspen Garrison second behind the Gales in scoring with four points on three shots, and then a few other St. Mary's members that have each made a field goal. So not only up to St. Mary's to return to its form defensively, but to find some answers offensively and hopefully in this second half, turn some of those turnovers that they created with their tenacity on defense into points. That is how they're going to have to get back in this ballgame if they want to try and overcome the 16th ranked Gonzaga Bulldogs who lead by 14. When we return in the halftime report, we'll take a look around at some of the other scores and the greater WCC. Also get you set for the men's game later tonight at 5 o'clock. It's 41-27 Gonzaga at the half. You're watching St. Mary's Women's Basketball in Stadium.
Welcome back into the halftime report here inside University of Credit Union Pavilion. Evan Giddings yeah. with you on yeah. stadium okay. and about five and a half minutes left before the beginning of the second half. St. Mary's trailing number 16 Gonzaga 41 to 27. And again, this is the St. Mary's team that although coming off a loss to the second place team in the conference in Portland on Thursday in 64 41 fashion, they had won three games prior to that in a row. And so now trying to defend home court for the second time of the four that they get straight here at UCU. Meanwhile, on the Gonzaga side, they have been running a rough shot on not only the WCC, but every opponent that they have faced. They have not lost in the new year. They have not lost since December 4th at number two Stanford. In fact, their only two losses this year have come on the road in a neutral site affair against Marquette by four early this season and then the game against the Cardinal. Meanwhile, looking around the rest of the conference, there's only one other game in action right now for the WCC, and it is BYU hosting Santa Clara. BYU right now the third place team, two games up on St. Mary's, who is four and four in conference play thus far. They are locked in a tight one with Santa Clara. 37 to 36 is your score right now in the third period with about 920 left in the third quarter. Meanwhile, coming up in just a few minutes, all the rest of the games are tipping off in the WCC. Down in Malibu at Firestone Fieldhouse, it'll be Pepperdine right now in last place in the WCC, getting set to host LMU and the Loyola Marymount Lions, who actually did win here in Moraga uh, the last time that St. Mary's had its a homestand. Also in the Spano Center up in Stockton Pacific, who gave Gonzaga quite a run on Thursday, a three-point victory for the Bulldogs, just a three-point loss for Pacific. They're going to be hosting Portland, who, of course, won here on Thursday in Moraga, and they're heading out to Stockton. That's a 2 o'clock tip in the 209. And finally, San Diego, who right now is tied with St. Mary's in the conference standings at 4-4, four and four, is hosting San Francisco at the Jenny Craig Pavilion in San Diego. And so right now a 10-win San Diego team against the 13-win San Francisco squad. That was a game back of fourth place. Right now, of course, held by your St. Mary's Gales along with San Diego. So a lot of work to do for St. Mary's right now against Gonzaga, but still potentially with some help along their way. We're looking at a top four finish to the weekend. That, of course, is the goal as they got another tough one coming up next week on Thursday at home against BYU before hosting San Diego, what could be an interesting matchup next Saturday. It's Australian Heritage Day as we continue on with our second half action. Coming up next, St. Mary's and number 16 Gonzaga. You're watching St. Mary's women's basketball on stadium.
We are ready for the second half here in Moraga inside University of Credit Union Pavilion. Evan Giddings with you on stadium. So glad you could join us as St. Mary's with a 14 point deficit here at home to the number 16 ranked Gonzaga Bulldogs. And of course those pesky dogs in a rivalry matchup for St. Mary's would love to try and overcome their rival from the north from Spokane, Washington here in this second half. Rat trying to do her best to begin this second half but comes up a butt short on the contest from Brenna Maxwell. Meanwhile, Michaela Williams the other way drives inside and will draw a foul and will be heading to the free throw line 15 seconds into this third. Gonzaga in the first half shot 52%, finished the first half on an 8-0 run, countering St. Mary's 8-0 run midway through the second quarter, who shot 42% in the first half. 44% from downtown for Gonzaga, 27% from the three-point line for St. Mary's. As Akela Williams missed her first free throw there. Second one is up, and it is good. This is a Gonzaga team that shoots over 80% from the free throw line as a team that is number one in the country. Also first in the NCAA with a 42.6 three-point shooting percentage, so right on track there. St. Mary's. Running their first set of offense and has it turned over, taken away by Gonzaga. 11 first half turnovers for St. Mary's that the Bulldogs turned into 12 points. We'll see if they can turn another opportunity into a triple and it's off from the corner on the shot by Williams. Wrath out ahead for the Gales. Steal to the top and now gets, gets it back from Hannafin. Interim head coach Allison Fasnack Trying to make some halftime adjustments as Steele cuts underneath towards the baseline, dumps it off for Garrison. Turnaround shot is good. Good looking Jay there from Aspen Garrison, and she's got six points. Kaylin Trong, four assists in the first half. This is a down low to Idrim who goes around Garrison and has it blocked from behind. It's going to be a jump ball. Possession arrow to Gonzaga. But really, the bigs, again, in the absence of Ali Bamberger, so missing about 16 points and nearly 10 rebounds a game. Her fill-ins in Garrison and West have done an admirable job against the front line of this Gonzaga offense. Egypt kicks it out to Trong, who fires up a three. Front rim. And Claire Steele out ahead for St. Mary's. Bounce pass inside. Whedon finishes in transition. Pretty pass from Steele. And here's Eliza Hollingsworth to the corner. Pick and roll with Trong, who drives inside and gets hit from behind. Looked like it was going to be against Claire Steele. So the second team foul of this third quarter for St. Mary's will send Kaylin Trong to the free throw line a senior guard out of Houston Texas has been missing her sister Kaylee for the majority of this season who got hurt in late November against Tennessee and for Kaylin Trong who's averaging just under 16 points per game makes both of her free throws there and scored double digits in 10 straight games for Gonzaga this season. Rap to Garrison. Tries to use a couple of pump fakes and then a wizard pass inside to Rap, who misses it with the left hand. I don't know how Garrison got that ball to Rap. Great look from St. Mary's, but could not finish. Trying to go baseline is Maxwell and then throws it into the backcourt. That's going to be a turnover. St. Mary's for the first two and a half minutes holding serve against Gonzaga. But still with some ground to make up, trailing by 13. Rapp will go to the bench. As returning for the Gales is Taylor Dalton. Hannafin with it from the top of the key. The steal curls off a screen into the corner to Whedon. Met by a couple of white jerseys, and it's ripped out of her hands, but last touched by Maxwell. Yeah. 
Weeden now. Thought she had just a breath of fresh air to get that shot off. Instead, it's Dalton with three to shoot. Nifty pass to Garrison, who is able to lay it in off the window. Ashpen Garrison with eight points inserted into the starting lineup, replacing Allie Bamberger. Big shoes to fill, and she's done a nice job thus far. Maxwell from the corner is good. One of the deadliest shooters in the country. Brenner Maxwell hits her first three. Puts Gonzaga back up by 14. Dalton the other way. Back down low to Garrison. And looked like it was off of Garrison. And so Gonzaga will take over. Maxwell and Trong to the bench. Returning is Muma. And part of me, Muma will come in for Trong as Maxwell remains in. Maxwell running baseline. Muma finds her. Quick fire on the three. Nothing but nylon for Bretta Maxwell. 53.3% from three-point range this season. That's tops in the country. Aspen Garrison denied inside by Hollingsworth. So back-to-back -back threes have put Gonzaga up by a game-high 17 points. And again, they can score in bunches. St. Mary's looking to find its stride offensively here in the second half. Jade Kirasome checked in off that dead ball. Now matched up with Ejim. Swings it to the corner. Hannafin skips it to Dalton. High arcing shot, short of the mark. And Williams grabs the rebound. Intensity revving up here in the second half. Ejim trying to spin baseline, barrels into Aspen Garrison. Who despite being thrown to the ground is called for the blocking foul. And that's gonna be Garrison's third personal Third team foul of the second half, pardon me, of the third quarter for St. Mary's. And so Whedon along with Garrison will go to the bench, replaced by Mastora, along with Ellie Croco, who played some really nice minutes in that first half. Jump shot by Ejim, no. Maxwell, the offensive rebound and put back is good. 10 second chance points for Gonzaga in this ball game. They lead by 19. Gonzaga playing St. Mary straight up. Step through move by Dalton. And she gets hacked. Foul against Esther Little. And Dalton will go to the free throw line. Dalton hits her first. First trip to the stripe tonight. And for St. Mary's just their Second opportunity at free throws today. And Dalton hits both. Gonzaga with nine points in this third period. Same areas with eight. Maxwell's hit a couple of threes, beginning to heat up. Being defended by Kira Somi. She can't shake her. That pass was tipped inside, and then coming out of the scrum is McKenna Mastora to an open Hannafin to the corner. Dalton kicks it. Croco, extra pass. Kira Some, and then draws a foul against Peyton Muma. And so at the 448 mark, Media timeout incoming. We'll step aside as well. Gonzaga right now shooting 50% from the floor. They lead by 15. 50 35. We're watching St. Mary's women's basketball on stadium.
448 left here in the third period. St. Mary's trailing number 16, Gonzaga, 50 to 35. And the Gales, who have found some consistency on, on offense, now trying to carry that to the defensive side of the court. Dalton quickly to Kirisome off the inbounds, corner three, long. And a rebound ripped down by Callie Stokes. Back off the bench for Gonzaga. And her ninth year head coach, Lisa Fortier, opposite interim head coach Allison Fasnack for St. Mary's. Second game of a four game homestand for the Gales as a three pointer from Maxwell is a little bit short. And there's Kirasome. Mastora now. Corner for Dalton, wide open for the three. Around and out, Croco comes flying in for the offensive rebound and then has it poked out of bounds by Gonzaga. Croco there in that first half, put a strong six minutes, hit a three. Also had a block and three rebounds. She, cr she cuts across the lane there, kicks it out. Kirisome, her three-pointer is off. St. Mary's, who has had some good looks from range, have just been unable to find it. Three of 15 from three for St. Mary's. Not a team that typically lights it up from beyond the arc, but 32.2% on the season, fifth best in the WCC. Have not been as efficient today, and now Dalton gets called for a foul on Stokes coming off a screen. Well, Dalton, who is one of those stronger perimeter defenders for St. Mary's, sometimes get caught, gets caught simply put running through those on offense. And that's the way she plays physical, really embodies the way St. Mary's as a group wants to play. Off the inbounds, nice find from Trong, and Little will draw a foul. Casey Whedon back into the game, along with Amy West for St. Mary's. That's Esther Little, who so far this year has played in 17 games. Hasn't got a lot of opportunities offensively in points, but is shooting 65% from the floor. Misses her first free throw there. Second free throw off the front of the rim and good. Three thirty to go here in the third period. As Whedon leaves it for Mastora. Mastora too strong off the glass. Trying to get around Trong, who up ahead finds an open Maxwell three pointer. No. Nearly there for the rebound was Stokes and then had it poked away from behind by Mastora. Strong will trigger the inbound. A three-pointer from the wing by Hollingsworth. No good. It looked like it was Hollingsworth. Pardon me, Little, that got called for the over-the-back foul. So that's going to be the second team foul on Gonzaga here in the third. Three minutes to play. St. Mary's already in the bonus. Croco nearly had that strip. Finds Whedon. Three-pointer. Pure. Tacey Whedon's got three threes. And trying to shoot St. Mary's back into this game. Trying to respond is Hollingsworth. Round and out, rebound, second chance opportunity, Maxwell, no, West gets the second board. Whedon out ahead, will stop for three, in and out. Tacey Whedon thought she had that one and it was a good look as Maxwell drives right at Croco and finishes with the offhand. Strong move from Brenna Maxwell. So a five point swing there in transition. As Whedon drives inside, looking for the cutting Croco. Instead, hands it off to West. Running hook shot that is denied. Hollingsworth stripping it away. 
It looks like we'll have a line change for both sides. Garrison, Steele, and Rappel return for St. Mary's. Meanwhile, Williams, Ejim, and Muma come in for Gonzaga. Gonzaga here in the second half has not been nearly as efficient as we saw in the first. Also, I've not had as many turnovers gifted to them by St. Mary's. Has only committed three here in this second half after committing a total of 10 in the first. Foul that time against Hollingsworth, fourth team foul for Gonzaga. And there's gonna be a foul against the Bulldogs there. Muma gets called for the reach in and that will give Claire Steele free throws with a minute 56 left here in the third. So St. Mary's has some time to try and make up some ground and gifted a couple of opportunities here. So Claire Steele makes two. Gonzaga leading by 15. And now a whistle is blown. It's taken out from outside. Strong here. Gives it up now for Hollingsworth. Hollingsworth trying to go around wrap and draws a foul on the sophomore from Australia here on Australian Heritage Day. I know they were giving out posters before the game and I'm sure we'll have more opportunities for those coming in for the five o'clock tip for the men's game to get some. Actually they don't, so they don't tag Rap for the foul. They get Garrison and that's her fourth. So that will loom large for St. Mary's as she's been in foul trouble due to the player at the free throw line, Yvonne Ejim. What's going on? So Ejim will make two. Croco now finding a cutting weed in. Back door, a block but a foul on Michaela Williams, who did not agree. But right now, both teams trying to settle things down offensively. And really, credit to both defenses that have been absolutely stout in the second half. Gonzaga has been, as a team, three of 12 from the floor. St. Mary's four for 14, as Whedon sticks the first free throw. The difference has been at the line uh, but here in this third period, St. Mary's has played Gonzaga evenly. Now 15 points to 14 here in the third in favor of St. Mary's after that free throw. So under 90 to go. Chance to finish strong and give yourself at least a striking distance, a puncher's chance in the fourth against Gonzaga. He's had its role slowed offensively. Muma off the pick from Ejim. Tries to dump it off, but it goes right to Croco. Dalton looking up ahead. Now Steele burrowing inside to a cutting Whedon for two. Now Tacey Whedon has been doing it on the inside and out. She's got nine points here in this third quarter as Trong will trigger the triple and misses there. On the game, Whedon's got 21 points to lead all scores. Eight of 15 from the floor. I got your studio. I heard you. Dalton. Now Claire Steele. Kicks it back out. Nearly to the half court line and then Rapp carries it into the back court. I guess she established possession right before the mid-marker line. Either way, that's going to be a turnover. And the shot clock will be off at 17 and a half seconds. 13-point lead for Gonzaga. St. Mary's would love to keep it there. E. Jim from the elbow. Eight seconds. Strong now. 
Looking for Maxwell. Three to shoot. Ejim, the pull up. It's good. And as the horn blows, Gonzaga will carry a 15 point lead into the fourth quarter. So St. Mary's hanging with the number 16 Bulldogs here at home. When we return, fourth quarter action from Moraga. And you're watching St. Mary's Way basketball from inside University Credit Union Pavilion on stadium. Fifteen point lead for 16th rank in Zaga here in Moraga from UCU Pavilion. Evan Giddings with you on stadium as out of the beginning of the fourth quarter. A whistle is called. It will go against Gonzaga, their first team foul. And St. Mary's actually outscored the Bulldogs in the third quarter, 17 to 16. It's unfortunate they have not been able to make up enough ground offensively to cut into this deficit that has been double digits the majority of this ball game. Defensively, El Gonzaga to about 40% shooting in that third period as Leah Hannafin sends it back out with 10 to shoot for Claire Steele. Steele looking for Croco, instead swings it out. Top of the key, Hannafin, three to shoot. She's got to force it. At least finds rim, but it's short, and Burton grabs the board. St. Mary's. Keeping that man-to-man -man defense. Croco working inside with Ejim, who wards her off just enough to get the shot up and scores off the window. Yvonne Ejim has got 22 points. Scored 22 on Thursday against Pacific and equals that total here against St. Mary's. Steel here off the screen from Croco. Tries to go inside on Burton. A reverse move that is blocked away by Michaela Williams. And now Trong up ahead. And Zaga, team that averages nearly 90 points per game. On pace to be, be far beneath that against St. Mary's. But still using to take its time and strong. A little hesitation glides in for the deuce. Kaitlyn Strong, who's played well today. She's got now 12 points. Double digits in her last now 11 straight games. Hannafin with a bounce pass to Croco. Goes around Burton, swings it. Mastora, three-pointer. That's good. 
McKenna Mastor, who has shot it well from three in conference action, continues her hot hand here. And that was necessary from St. Mary's. Trailed by 19. A miss from Trong. Triggers Taylor Dalton in transition. Goes around Trong. Dump pass off to Mastora. And it's a transition bucket for the Gales. So St. Mary's trying to get out and run. Hannafin takes it away from Burton. Left it right there on a silver platter. Seven minutes to go here. 14-point ball game. Dalton out to steal. Miguel's bench right now doing a fantastic job, along with Hannafin and Dalton, two of the starting five. Mastora stops, tries to get around Ejim, and looked like Ejim got a piece of that. Now with Hannafin, Ejim goes right around Hannafin, steps through and finishes. 24 points for the reigning WCC sixth woman of the year. That's kind of the crazy part of this Gonzaga team last year that went to the second round of the NCAAs. Ejim is not even in the starting five and has now become their top scorer. Hannafin, corner three, and that one's off. Maxwell looking up ahead for Williams. Who steps around Steele in and out. Burton grabs the offensive rebound and will send it back out to Trong, who finds the open Maxwell. Sharpshooter, round and out. Third opportunity, and it is converted. Burton, a couple of offensive rebounds, and helps Gonzaga push their lead to 18 points, 67 to 49, and a timeout taken at the 551 mark. We will step aside as well. St. Mary's on the other side, trying to dig out of a hole. We'll be back after this. St. Mary's women's basketball on stadium. Five minutes and 51 seconds left in regulation. St. Mary's trailing the 16th ranked Gonzaga Bulldogs here at home by 18 points. Uh, Gonzaga, who was stymied a bit defensively in the third period, has got off to another hot start to begin the fourth. They scored 26 in the first, and that has helped them jump out to a double digit lead that they have maintained for the majority of this contest. Clear Steele, along with Hannah Ratton, gets it beyond the midcourt marker. Rapp on the floor with Kirisoma, Steele, Kroko, along with Tacey Whedon. Off the pass from Kirisoma, collects it. Drives in on Williams and then draws a, a foul on the junior from Los Angeles. And for Williams, that's going to be her third personal. It'll be the second team foul for Gonzaga in the fourth. An 18-point deficit with five and a half to play is certainly not ridiculous, and that's an excellent start from Hannah Rapp there, but 
a deep hole to dig out of against a team that has only dropped two games so far this year and has been unbeaten in WCC action. Williams glides to the rim. Nice touch off the glass. And so Gonzaga scores right back. Player steal inside to Whedon. Whedon, who's got 20 plus. Left hand flip off the mark. 21 points to be exact on 8 of 15 from the floor. Strong tries to draw contact on Kirisome. I believe it was stripped and then it's going to be off and out of bounds from St. Mary's. So immediate timeout taken here at the 450 mark. We'll keep it here through the break. Gonna have your, oh, or uh, pardon me, we are going to break. So we're gonna take a break right now. St. Mary is down by 18. We're back after this. St. Mary's staring an 18-point deficit in the face here at home against the 16th-ranked team in the country, Gonzaga, who right now is looking to compile its 11th win in a row. St. Mary's, the one, three straight heading into this homestand beginning on Thursday. Includes next Thursday, pardon me, next weekend. Kalen Trong drops in the two right there. Gonzaga leads by a game-high 20. Samira's next game will, get, will be against BYU on Thursday. That's a 6.30 tip before hosting San Diego next Saturday at 5 o'clock. Nice backdoor cut from Tacey Whedon. Hannah Rapp finds her underneath. And Gonzaga will head home after this final road game. Has LMU in Spokane on Thursday before hosting Pepperdine over the weekend. Missed that time from Callie Stokes. Little grabbed the board before she was fouled. And that's going to be on Hannah Rapp. Second personal and the first team foul of the fourth quarter for St. Mary's. A little over four to play. On Australian Heritage Day. And three Australians on this St. Mary's team. Four more on the men's team coming up at 5 o'clock hosting Santa Clara. You can catch that on NBC Sports Bay Area. Strong tries to get too fancy going behind the back. And with six to shoot, Williams nearly pulls up and then Steele's trying to fight for that attempted steal. And fouls Strong. And Sam Mary shorthanded today, missing Allie Bamberger, who was injured on Thursday, hoping to get her back before next weekend, and if not, that road trip upcoming at the beginning of February. Stokes kicks it out to an open shooter. There's Hollingsworth, who knocks down the three from straight away. Gonzaga also missing a couple of key contributors. Kaylee Trong, the twin sister of Kaylin was hurt against Tennessee earlier this year, as was Maude Hybens. 
Casey Whedon's jump shot is off. Rapp, offensive rebound, and puts it right back in. Muma will swing it. Stokes off the little screen. Ten on the shot clock for Williams. Dumps it off to Hollingsworth. Face up jump shot, no. Garrison, who's playing with four fouls, grabs the rebound. Kirisome, the steal. Back to Rapp. Hesitation, drives inside. Finds the open shooter. Whedon, that's off the back rim, but Kirisome is there for the board. Rapp from straight on. Too strong. And Muma finishes off the possession. St. Mary's, who was shooting 50% at one point in the second quarter, now down to 39% as Muma steps back and drains a triple. And it's a 22-point ball game with 2.16 left. Gonzaga will bring in Burton for Williams. St. Mary's is going to fall to 500 overall, just a game below 500 in the WCC. Casey Whedon, not much space there. Steele tries to open some things up for Kirisome, who makes the short corner J. Kirisome, one of the three Australians honored today. On Australian Heritage Day, along with Hannah Rapp and Leah Hannafin for St. Mary's. And Allison Fasnack will go to her bench, bring back Croco, West, and Mastora. And Rapp, Garrison, and Whedon, all three starters for today, likely done. With about 90 seconds to play. So meanwhile, Gonzaga will improve to 19 and 2, 9 and 0 in the West Coast Conference, sitting atop the standings as they have all season. Kirisome into the paint, stops, tries to float one, but misses a bit far. Stokes finds Muma, an open shooter, and then a putback and one is good for Callie Stokes. So Gonzaga, who's been crashing the boards hard, especially in this second half, out rebounding St. Mary's on the game, 36-26, 12 offensive rebounds. And seven of those had come in this second half. Another 20-point quarter for Gonzaga. And another 80-point game for the Bulldogs. 23-point advantage, highest we've seen today. Addison Whedon will enter for St. Mary's, as will Jasmine Farmer. And so Allison Fasnacht emptying her bench here for the final minute. McKenna Mastora, free throw line, thought about the jumper. Now here's Whedon. The 10 to shoot, takes the West pick. Croco from the corner, gives it up. Whedon's got three to shoot. Taken away by Muma. Not quite a shot clock violation, so Gonzaga gets out in transition. Extra pass from Little. Muma finishes with the left hand. Four seconds separation, shot clock and game clock. McKenna Mastora. To the corner, Whedon a pump fake and a pull up. And a rebound grabbed by Stokes. And Muma will dribble this thing out. Shot clock is turned off and Gonzaga will coast here after a strong fourth quarter. 23 points in the final 10 minutes and the 16th ranked Bulldogs remain perfect in the WCC. Their eighth victory, they remain atop the standings as they hand St. Mary's their 10th loss of the season, fifth in conference play. 
When we come back, we're going to hear from interim head coach Allison Fasnack as St. Mary's Falls 82 to 57. This is St. Mary's women's basketball on stadium. Back here inside University of Credit Union Pavilion in Moraga, California, St. Mary's Falls, 82 to 57, and number 16, Gonzaga. Evan Gatings here with interim head coach Allison Fasnacht. And look, obviously, the, the final score of this game, not necessarily reflective of the intensity that I, at least that I saw, especially in that second quarter from yep. your team. How did you feel the performance today matched up against a team that? You know, is undefeated for an, for a reason. Yeah, I mean, they're the top team in our league, like you said, for a reason. Uh, they they present a lot of different problems, uh, pretty much all over the court. Um, but for us, you know, we talked about it in the in the locker room, like, um, you know, we have to come out and we have to compete. Like, we don't have a chance if we're not going to compete for 40 minutes. So I thought we got off to a little bit of a slow start, but we kind of rallied toward the end of the first quarter, kind of found our footing in the second quarter, and like you could just tell, like you said, I don't. I think if we had played the, the whole game like we played in the second quarter, we're probably in this game, uh, at least giving ourselves a chance in the fourth. But we just have lulls, and um, that's on me. I, I've got to figure out a way when I sub to keep the energy high and uh, continue to help us uh, you know, find a way to, to keep that energy and the intensity and our competitiveness. So um, when we compete, I think we can compete with anybody in this league, but we've got to figure out a way to, to kind of be a little bit more consistent with that. Interim head coach Allison Fasnack with us here on the post game. Obviously, a big storyline coming into this game was the absence of Ali Bamberger, but the combination of Aspen Garrison, Ellie Croco, Amy West, I thought did a nice job of trying to fill <laughs> of as much of a void as you can. Sure. Uh, what did you see from the interior of your team tonight? Yeah, I mean, um, like you said, you don't really uh, you don't replace an Ali Bamberger. Um, you hope to kind of fill a little bit of a void with a multiple people. It's not just one person's job to come in and take, you know, 15 points and, you know, yeah. 10, 10 rebounds. But, um, you know, for us, again, I just wanted our, our post players to compete. You know, Aspen, um, unfortunately, got in a little bit of foul trouble, which kind of hampered her. Um, I thought Ellie came in and gave us great minutes. She, she battled, um, you know, gave us great effort. Wasn't perfect at times, but that, that's okay. I don't, I don't, I'm not asking them to be perfect. I'm asking you to compete and give all your effort that you have while you're out there. So, um, obviously, EGM had a great game tonight, 9 for 12, had 24 points. Like, she's obviously a problem in this league. So, um, luckily, we get a chance to play him again in here in a couple weeks. So, we'll go back to the drawing board and, and try to figure some things out. And hopefully, Allie will, uh, will be back with us by the time we play him again. Well, speaking of filling voids, you know, Tacey Whedon had to take a lot of the offensive load on her shoulders today. Mm -hmm. And you know, 23 points after kind of a slow game against Portland. Mm -hmm. Did you sense more aggressiveness from her that resulted in you know, a large scoring game? Yeah, I mean, I think she's always looking to be aggressive. I don't think there's uh, even on those days where she doesn't score a ton that she's ever not being aggressive. But um, obviously with Allie being out, we tried to run a few more things kind of in her direction um, and screen for her a little bit more. And we're going to continue to tweak things offensively to try and get her some open looks um, as well as continue to encourage everybody else. I'm, I'm yelling on the sideline, be aggressive, be aggressive. Um, we can't just sit on the perimeter and pass around and think we're going to score that way. So we've got to make it happen. And, and those are our choices. 
Well, with San Diego playing USF today, still a chance to remain in fourth place heading into next week. But, you know, you're kind of going through the gauntlet we here with, with <laughs> Portland on Thursday. The number one team, obviously, today in Gonzaga. And then the number three team, currently BYU, coming yep. up next. Uh, how do you try and prepare yourself and your team for that, knowing that you got three really good opponents and then even San Diego on Saturday coming up? I think we're going to be juiced to play next week. Um, I think we did not give our best effort in, at BYU. I think our whole team would agree with that. So I think we're, we're really excited to get them again. And obviously, San Diego, we've felt that we gave that one away that that was on me um, just some some stuff in the fourth quarter I could have done better as a coach to help us um, put us in better position but um, we're, we're going to be juiced to play both of those teams so um, hopefully we'll have another great week of practice and 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 be ready to go next weekend no doubt we appreciate you joining us awesome. here on the post game show thank you so much thank you interim head coach Allison Fasnack with us here post game after St. Mary's falls to number 16 Gonzaga 82 to 57 I mean like she mentioned a lot of juice in these games coming up the next week Thursday against BYU, who got the better of St. Mary's earlier this year in Provo, 66-41 at the tail end of the 2022 year. That was actually on New Year's Eve that they lost, and then they lost the previous game before that to San Diego on the road down in Sunny SD, 69-65 in overtime. So I'm sure that's a loss that St. Mary's and Fasnacht and this entire team would like to rewrite coming into next week. So that'll finish up the, th the third and fourth game of the homestand. You can catch the Thursday matchup against BYU at 6.30 right here on the WCC Network before a 5 o'clock tilt with San Diego. That'll be on Saturday. So the last of the four home games of this longest homestand of the season for St. Mary's of the conference selection, that is. But St. Mary's falls today to Gonzaga, 10 and 10 overall this year, 4 and 5 in the WCC. We'll, of course, wait to see the result of San Diego and USF later on as they are currently in action, but have to wait and see who wins that game to see who is officially in fourth place in the WCC. So Gonzaga improves to 19 and 2 overall, 9 and 0 in conference play, the remain atop, and that will do it for us here in Moraga. Big thank you to our producer today, David, back there in the studio. Emily Smith, as always, making the production run as smooth as possible. Tim Fitzgerald, our SID here. My name is Evan Giddings saying so long from University of Credit Union Pavilion, where one last time St. Mary's loses to Gonzaga, 82-57 the final. You've been watching St. Mary's women's basketball on Stadium.